I'm with legs, you with legs, and Tony's with legs, and and we were all just homies. So then one, I think it was 95 or 96, we performed the first time ever at a Rocksteady anniversary. Uh, the relationship was cool. I was about that that hip hop life. Q mm-hmm. was obviously already in, and Tony's Tony was about that life. And Crazy Legs was a great uh, connector of all. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official. Com. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. Whenever you're ready, brother, I'm ready. Yeah, we're in the uh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be, choose to be or desire to be the sporting art street culture. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings or Co.uk. Hold tight, everyone has got the Kellervision app, free download, Android, iPhone for all your street culture needs. And you're on. Yo, if you're listening, big up yourselves. If you're watching, you're about to tune in, come in and cop out to the man of Transatlantic, showing off his gems in a big way. Arsonist mighty destroy inside the place. How are you, my brother? My brother, I'm great. Um, life is amazing, man. Everything is everything is wonderful. It's all about that that sunshine and and everybody's personal minds, and we all come together and we be a wonderful community of hip hop heads, bro. Like, we'll take your date right back in this one because we go back considerable amount of time ago, but. The transformation that you have encountered from anyone that's stepping in seeing destroy now to destroy, but it's like two different. It's it's well, it's one and the same because you're the same awesome character, but it's like it's like a four wheel drive version. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's got the road and it's fucking his. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> How do you feel about that? You know what? Um, um, salute to everybody out there who uh, comes from nothing. Salute to everybody who, if you see darkness in your in your moment or in your life, you're able to push the clouds away and you understand that the sun will shine. Today, I spoke to the gentleman, a gentleman by the name of Larry Miller. He was the guy, the head of Jordan brand for Nike. This individual was the head of a company, as you guys know, $3.5 billion in, in that year. I think they, they brought in revenue wise. And when he was 16, he murdered somebody. Oh, he, no. he spent years of his life in prison, came out, uh, reformed himself and, uh, you know, began anew. Wow. Stories like that. I share with you guys only because that is a very extreme provocative one. Um, That is one that I took in today. And uh, some of us may come from our versions of darkness and be able to rise like the Phoenix. I, myself, a boom bap kid from Brooklyn. um, I seen some dark things, but the great Mm. thing and ability that I have, which I'm, think it's a very good thing is to try to be positive throughout the madness and you know keep a smile on my face force a smile on my Mm -hmm. face and just kind of exude good energy man so Mm -hmm. i'm great it's learned behavior isn't it positive mindset uh you know from the b-boys from the graffiti artists to the the turntablists to the mcs man we all and even just the hip hop community in a whole, you know, we all come from struggle. We all come from from some wild times. And um, I think we're in a curve where you're going to still have some people who want to celebrate the hard times and the way that they have it. And some people like like to put it front and center like I did this, I did that. Mm. Um, I think we're coming to a time where we're all kind of like, yeah, man, we did that. Now let's Let's be dope. Mm. You've, uh, in a correct if I'm wrong, and I'm sure I'm not, but I've always considered you, D, as um, it's quite a spiritualized person, somebody that is very self-aware anyway. 
Um, I think when you're dealing on that level of creativity, which you do, because, you know, I remember seeing the Arsonist show back in the day and it's like, if one, if it weren't one of you that was breakdancing at the same time rapping, the other one was jumping on the decks and she was mad. You know, you've got to, you've got to serve that creative process and you've got to serve your creative output. And yeah, you've got to have a level of wisdom there that, you know, I, I feel like you've always had that. You've always been quite driven spiritually. Um. Well, that's, you know, I appreciate that you said that as far as like the aesthetic of the show, uh, Pure Hip Hop Kids. And um, I cared about a performance. I care that when I go to see a live show that I'm entertained. And if I am the person doing the entertaining, I want to make sure that I do it and did it to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the process, I've learned a lot. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I admire that you say the word spirituality. Um, uh, but I believe in us. I believe in the humans. Um, mm. You know, they're all types and all forms. And we all trying to just, you know, be in our energy, be around good people, be around positive people. And when people come to us who have their challenges, we can navigate those waters because it isn't like everybody's in a comfortable, uh, stable space at all times. So um yeah if it's spirituality i mean you know i'm just trying to be a good spirit dude you just blow my mind because i've never heard it reach out and that's the b-boy in you essentially because you it's a people's it's a people's thing i've never heard it's really all right without going down this kind of morbid track because i'm i'm very much all about this conversation right now but it's, it's interesting that people can often deflect from the responsibility of being a human and supporting their humans and replace that with spirit feeling that self-fulfillment fulfillment of being spiritualized. Yeah. You know, I'm here, I'm present. If I was nearby you, I would, you know, give you a pound and say, what's up. But right now what we could exchange is energies and smiles, you know, and, <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. And that's, that's the gift that we as humans have to inspire each other because Whoever is listening at, at, to this and or watching this right now, I implore you or I dare you to smile at a stranger. You don't have to say anything. Just walk by, smile, and keep it moving. That's energy right there. Yeah, and it makes you feel good as well as them feel good. Absolutely. I think that's part of the ethos of the new show. The new, I don't know, it, especially the podcast as well. Instagram Live and the such, you really have the opportunity to connect. And Destroy shines when it comes to this shit. Like, it feels like it's more than just a show of people being able to show their gems off. It's actually, it's more of a coming together. It's a, it's a mindset. You know, brother, I got to tell you, man, I've been fortunate to not only be a hip hop um, an artist, um, but I've been fortunate to do, you know, radio, TV, NBA, basketball, uh, NFL, football, and these big brands. So let me get, let's get real with you. So, you know, we got the boom bap kids, we were bum ass kids, right? We was figuring it out. We, yeah, 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 culture. Yeah, yeah. we, 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 <laughs> we cared about it. And then yeah. what I learned is that there was these corporations that were dictating the way, um, our culture was going to be conveyed to the masses. Mm -hmm. um, some people said, ah, fuck them, fuck them, sellouts and all that stuff and all that. And, 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 I, and I played a part in that at times. And then I realized that um, the, the, the wave was changing where a lot of us were becoming included in those conversations. You know, mm. you had Sprite that would have Nas in common and uh, then you had sneakers that were done by artists and you had all these. And I was like, wait, hold on. It's no longer a, like a wall. There's yeah. an open communication between generations, between genres. Yeah. So I wanted to be part of those type of conversations and not kind of be like the, ah, uh, you know, they, they, they're they pimping our culture mm -hmm. because I knew we had a position to play. We're soldiers of this culture. So um mm. rather than throw darts that nobody would see or feel i figured let me step in and be a part of the experience and give people the version of the culture that i know that made me 
uh, become the person that I am. Yeah, because there was industry in amongst that. And when we were growing up, you know, whether it be Adidas and Run DMC, it was all these things that as a kid, you've, you've obviously you had a, you factored in on that, you know, witnessing the, it, it being in amongst us, but you never really looked at the back end, did you? You know, to get to your specific uh, um, observation, um, we show off your gems, the show that I do, which is about collecting, you're right. You know, it's also about the human experience. You know, mm. it's also about like connecting with human beings, brother. Mm. I'm a social person. I go to everything that I can go to. If it's happening in New York City or wherever I'm at, I'm there. I'm doing about, you know, three events in a night, uh, just having a great time, um, seeing people, seeing old friends, getting a quick chat with somebody. I'm looking for inspiration, trying to inspire or just being present in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so we show off your gems. That's what I do because I know that some of the items that people show or some of the items that people see connect them to a time, a passion that we all share as a community. So um, I'm fortunate to be able to convey that energy and, and receive it as well. 100%. And we did circle. We did frequent in the same, uh, you know, European circuit of things and I, I those kind of tours they differ they differ every night there's always something else going on but that's what adds to the the the, the craziness of being on road and and always being up for it always being down always be, being early for soundcheck always going to the going to the shopping mall always going to the after party always going to uh, that must have been one hell of a playground for you I loved it. I I love it still to this day. Um, I know a lot of people are in this business that do not, and that is okay. Everybody is, you know, has a right to to their thing. And yeah. me, I I love making people smile, having a good time. Yeah. I just feel like you know. <sighs> Our, our our human exchange is is important i just mm -hmm. i just love it you know salute to everybody out there who who is comfortable me i tell you like this i run i climb mountains i do stuff i've spent a lot of time with myself as well you know my foundation i try to keep it strong as well because mm -hmm. you know you know if your foundation isn't strong how can you make an impact to the next person you know what mm -hmm. i mean so um, I, I just stay active, brother. I just stay active. I choose what information I take in, what mm -hmm. type of movies I watch, what type of music I listen to, uh, what type of conversations I'm having or going to have. And even when I have a conversation with somebody who is super negative, I navigate it because my goal is to try to bring some sunshine into their life, man. And there's no bullshit in that. Yeah, yeah no, I really, really value that, brother. Curiously, what what was your first hip hop discipline? Were you always emceeing, or were you a b boy or a graph writer? Um, I was a I was a dancer, uh, you know, b boy. I was really first, a dancer. Yeah. Just you know, I was kind of the entertainment for my family. The door in my my house was never closed, so we had an open door policy. So I entertained all the drunk people. My parents would have come. And then um, I started DJing because my brother had records and we had turntables. So I was doing that. I DJed my, my middle school prom. Um, I DJed my, my middle school, my junior high school teacher's Christmas party. Nice. So I was doing that. And then um, I got, I was doing graffiti and I got arrested for it. And when I got arrested for it, I was also dabbling and being in, in writing rhymes. And I was like, wait, <laughs> I can't get arrested for that one. So I think that's the one I'm going to do, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I met Tony Touch, DJ Tony Touch, and I was uh, about 14, 15, something like that. And the ride all started for me, man. Wow. What would it have been like meeting Tony Touch for the first time that age? That must have been absolutely mine. Well, you got to understand, he's not Tony Touch at the time. Oh, yeah. Facts. That's true. He's, he's just working at a store. <laughs> I'm just a regular dude who loves going to the store. And he's scratching up and I'm just looking. I'm the only one who cares. The owners of the store, nobody cared. And 
He's like, yo, what do you do? I said, I rap. And he's like, uh, what's your rap name? I said, I don't have one. And what's your rhymes? I said, I don't have them. <laughs> and he was like, tomorrow, come with your rhymes and a rap name. And uh, I was like, oh, man, okay, cool. So I was thinking of Kid and Play, um, Nice and Smooth. I liked how, how it worked with each other, those names. Yeah, phonetically. Of touch and Destroy. So I was like, oh, there it is, you know, touch and destroy. So I came the next day. My name is Destroy. I came with my rhymes. And that was it. Yeah, well, that's way ahead of its time. Like, as a youngster, to come with those kind of right, it needs to phonetically sound right when you say it, when you write it on paper. Did it. That is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that's cold. Yeah, so um, it, was a, it, it, it was a lot of fun, man. I was able to travel, do a lot of things with him. I was still in high school. Um, but able to travel. Um, and I was lucky my parents were, damn, my, my parents were dreamers as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> my father was a police officer and my mother ran a casino in the house when my father was at work. So, wow. and then Friday and Saturdays, they just drank and played music as my father played every instrument and my mother sang. So it was a crazy mix of madness in my wow. house. Wow. What a hodgepodge of what a what a bunch of influence. Yeah, are they both still alive now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they they both Fantastic. still with us. They both in love. They yeah. still uh, making making sex. Yes, yeah. uh, you know, you heard <laughs> still it here first. still there. Yeah, yeah, they're still okay. having unprotected sex. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a podcast exclusive right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Close the door, I'm blowing your mother's back out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um what, what's the affiliation? It might be off topic slightly. I'm moving on. Um what's the affiliation with Rocksteady with uh with the arsonist? There is one, isn't there? Uh, so the way it started is with Tony Touch. So Tony Touch was trying to get his name out there and he had a he had a car and Crazy Legs was in the Bronx. And if Crazy Legs was doing something, Tony mm. wanted to be a part of it. I was under Tony's wing, so I'd be everywhere Tony would go. And then we went to Rocksteady Anniversary. I think it was the 16th anniversary or the <laughs> 18th. I forgot. Uh, however, this one was when it was still at Rocksteady Park in on the, in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, what happens is, you know, the relationship grows. Um, and when I'm rolling with Tony touch and crazy legs, crazy legs is like, yo, let's go to this karate school where I meet Q unique, uh, in a cypher. I don't remember meeting Q, but he remembers me. Um, wow. and I remember that day. Uh, so the relationship was that Q unique was also crazy legs his friend so it was like a whole like i'm with legs you with legs and tony's with legs and and Damn. we were all just homies so then one i think it was 95 or 96 we performed the first time ever at a rock steady anniversary uh the relationship was cool i was about that that hip hop life q mm-hmm. was obviously already in and tony's tony was about that life and crazy legs was a great uh connector of all yeah. So we were also making a name for ourselves. You know, it wasn't like we was just doing nothing. We was, we was out, out me personally, I was out there battling as an MC. Mm-hmm. I was in the village in New York city, ready to go against anybody. I would go to every event and go inside and battle inside. And if you want more and you got friends, let's go outside. So the <laughs> re- re- reputation was happening. And then, uh, you know, legs found it to make sense to put us down i personally never wanted to be in rock steady <laughs> you heard that here fam. why is that <clears throat> um i'll tell you why and it's Ooh. a pretty rebellious story hold on it's about to get spicy <laughs> so um i was a i was a knucklehead you know like a lot of us and um tony touch was knew that I was messing up in school because I was always on tour, bro. We was always on the road at clubs. So he was like, yo, bro, if you don't pass and get out of school, I'm not going to let you get down with Rocksteady crew. And then Crazy Legs, you know, so what they were doing were being big brothers to me. Yeah, they mentoring, yeah. 
Right. But the problem is when you deal with a kid like me, I'm rebellious. Mm -hmm. So if you told me to do something, obviously I'm not going to do it. If you tell me not to do something, (laughs) I'm going to do it. (laughs) So when they put that, when they dangled that in front of me, like, yo, if you graduate school, we'll put you in Rocksteady Crew. I'm like, I don't care about no rock steady crew. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know totally. Because I, mean? I was, a, I was an animal, bro. I was, you know, I was a freaking animal, and and uh, you know, I love it. I was just with Crazy Legs uh, on Saturday, and you know, those are those are my brothers. I love the whole ride. Yeah, man. Well, from one rock steady member to another, it's, this is, it, and for a lot of people, it, it, the journey that you went through. It, it's at the same time as the rock steady emergence and Tony Touch and well the events that used to go on in New York. I mean that's something that actually that actually correlates really well with my timeline. Um, of course, being one the authentic one uh, of yours, but more so that as I was coming up, I was seeing arsonists very much as a, as an alternative battle crew compared to everyone else that was parlaying at the time. You know the raucous era. And that sort of thing, you guys just came with a whole different ethos. You know what I mean? Yeah, we we did. And I want to um, attest that a lot to um, our 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 upbringing. This is um, man, I got I, like like I love the time. I wish I could peg it specifically. But, you know, I was in th- that place in my life, in my time. I had just finished like. Um, you know, I, I was always ciphering, mm. but I was just getting out of a relationship. I was still a teenager. Mm. So I just dived into hip hop as an MC. So when it became to like performing, writing, battling, music, anything, I was aggressive with it. I, I put all, you know, the, I put my 10,000 hours in early um, because. Can I just, can I just, can I just break you there for a second? Did uh-huh. she break up with you? Did I? Uh, yeah. What happened was um, she ended up she ended up wanting to bomb trains at like four, five in the morning. Now, I'm a dude from the street, four or five in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm going to let you, you know, if you're being autistic with it, that's food, That's cool. I ain't going to knock you. But I know a lot of people. So a lot of people will be like, yo, D, she out here wilding. So, you know, I, I can't be out there with the reputation like, yo, B, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, fam. <laughs> so um, so it literally was graffiti that broke you up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, um, um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, so when we was together, I was super strict. I mean, the arsonist could tell you I was super strict. I threw out people who who would do stupid shit because I was already in a crew. I was already in a gang. Yeah. We already did bad things. And um, I no longer wanted to do that. I was coming to a place in my life when I created The Arsonist that I cut out everybody who was a knucklehead. If you didn't do any of the four elements of hip hop, I didn't want you around me. You yeah. not in my house no more. And that's exactly how I kept it. And the guys could tell you, I, I kept like a list this guy has to do this and this. And I was super strict. That's um, militant, bro. You went in. Yeah, I did because um, I mean, look at look at the situation now. You know what I mean? I'm still out here being persistent. Yeah, Yo, you know uh, what? Testament, testament yeah, to that. I'm still yeah, doing yeah. it. So, is that is that a controlled thing? It must be. You like you? you nah, I'm gonna you, tell you a funny ass story, bro. You know how the arsonist ended? I was kicked out of the group. What? Um, yeah, I was kicked out of the group because, uh, you know, um, yeah. Uh, so we're on tour. Uh, we're at an in-store yeah. in Vancouver. We're going to start signing some autographs. One member gets into a fist fight with the other member. And um, I didn't like that. I don't think it was appropriate to to physically you know get into a physical altercation mm. in front of fans so you know what I mean yeah so we all agreed send one of the guys home from the tour continue to tour halfway through that tour I knew that the guy that I sent home was one that I was 
creatively very connected to. Like I liked what he brought. If anything, mm. I liked him the most um, as a peer uh, lyrically and what he brought to the table. Right. Um, so I started like having some some um, some thought process like, listen, I already have these songs with Tony Touch that I never released. When I get back to New York, while we have our arsonist break because we was on tour for three years, I'm going to start working on my solo shit, which was already halfway done. Mm. And um, one of the members didn't agree with that idea, thought I was going to go and kind of forget where I came from. Um, and I was like, Method Man did it. Wu-Tang was able to navigate it. Mm. You know, that should be the same. And also the arsonist started inside my house and everybody in the arsonist knows each other through me. Mm. So, you know, I would I wouldn't do that. I know some of you guys when you was getting pa- punished, yeah, of course. you know, as, yeah. as, as kids. Um, cool. So we can continue it on with the tour. And then when I went to the studio, book time for all of us to sit down and start focusing on my solo stuff. When I opened the door to the studio, the remaining members of the arsonists um sat me down and said they no longer wanted me in the group. Um wow. and I was like, <laughs> mm. here it is you guys thought i was gonna forget y'all and y'all fucking forgot y'all wanted me out so wow. um you know it was it was it was tricky i mean you know the the guy who i'll use the word manipulation the guy who did a lot of that regrets it um mm-hmm. i don't uh i don't um you know, that was in the past. It sucked. And I continued on with my career. I had, a, you know, my solo run and, and, and all that stuff. But, um, you know, that was egos. So the gentleman you know, was doing his ego thing. And um, I was like, oh, you, you guys agree with this? Okay, cool. So, you know, I'm out of here then. Mm-hmm. And I just mm-hmm. went on my way. It's interesting. Um Relatably, very much like I guess the first time you well, you and you broke up with your girl and then you went for this, I'm going full attack on this MC thing. I kind of work in the same way because similarly to you, I broke up with my back then girlfriend, and all of a sudden I realized how aggressive I was towards that emotion. And I went straight in hammer and tongs, more or less for an audience of one, just absolutely burning the world you know just going for it and there's something to be said about that level of grief um and how you can regurgitate it reapply it into a thing and then turn it into a positive it's almost like an extra fuel to your engine and i and i I, i'm guessing maybe that would be the case when you walked away from something like you say after three years you'd been so hell-bent on yeah yeah you know what uh looking back at it it was crazy it was crazy that i so comfortably walked away from it Mm. If anything, if anything that I gather from this is that they said that and I just freely said, okay, cool, I'm out. Mm. Mm. At any, like in real thinking, I was like, wait, this is mine. I created this. Mm. You know, I know your mother. I know your mother. They don't know your mother. I know your last name. They don't know you. You know what I mean? Like I knew what schools everybody went to because that's where I like, I was also, um, I also played sports in my neighborhood, you know what I mean? And in kind of Brooklyn. So I knew a lot of people, Mm. you know, so I was, and I would, I'd be everywhere, bro. So (laughs) I'd be like, Oh, you do this, come to my house. You're going to meet my crew. That's how Q happened. He, you know, yeah. He, you know, so that's just how, how how it was. And it was, um, I just also felt that nothing could stop me. Like, okay, cool. This is what y'all doing. Cool. And uh, I'll be honest, the I, I was signed. We were signed to a record label, and they didn't like that the people at the record label was taking me out. Um, and oh, I thought it was a good move because we could build a strong relationship with the label to root for us, yeah. as opposed to us always continuing the narrative of fuck the record label. I'm yeah. like, these guys are our institution. They hire people you know, let's figure out that relationship and navigating. So we're Mm. on, we can make sure we always are um, serving their interest. um, Mm, That's right. As professionals. 
as professionals because you get to a peak, you get to the ceiling of one um, chapter in your career and that's the intuitive next jump, isn't it? That's kind of, isn't it, isn't it? It's one big puzzle being in a band, isn't it? I mean, it, it, being in a relationship with one person is, is a puzzle, brother. Yeah, but, true, you know, you right. pick your battles and and yeah. just stay stay by the things that you believe and and that's pretty much it. But it's it's tough. I mean, look at look look at the landscape of music overall. You know, bands mm. that stay together. Mm. It's true. And actually, I I I mean, I'll just throw some names off the hat. Uh, De La Soul, um, Foo Fighters. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, these they've been together forever, <laughs> and they just yep. hold it together. Yep, you, you're you're correct. But so um, cool. you know, you'll see right like last year, you see the gorillas doing a tour with just pasta noose mm. because you know Dove doesn't want to go and Maceo doesn't want to go. You know what I mean? So yeah. or you'll get Wu Tang sets that are not Wu Tang. It's like three guys. Yeah. You know, it's it's really tricky navigating, you know, times and, and all that stuff, but it's all good. Like, you know, I, I, I found a nice little space for myself. Um, mm -hmm. something that I stood happy with and I could be my pure fun, fun, loving self. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it is about fun, loving curiosity, uh, wanting to go out to dinner with anybody that is associated with something that you're holding dear. And I'm, I'm sensing this with, with you now especially on your on your socials there is a and, and you mentioned earlier that this has just been you forever this has just been you forever always going out and doing stuff but man doesn't it doesn't it come to true fruition when you've actually committed to a project and you're there and you're saying nah this is it's the synergy on this this action and it i don't have to be answerable to anybody else this is just m me and it's so empowering isn't it you know what, um, man, one thing I learned from playing team sports is camaraderie. It's mm. looking at the next person and saying, we did this. Mm. That's something I loved. That's why when I did the arsonist, it was a team. Um, and then I started, you know, started realizing not everybody was as committed and passionate uh, to push it forward. And that's OK. And that's all right. So now I find my teams as me, my own entity, my own ent entity destroy is me connecting with other um, individuals yeah. who have, you know, movements. So like when I mess with, like, I know it sounds crazy, but when I like in the States, I do, I mess with like a, uh, battle of the year, you know, which takes Ooh. place out there. Yeah. Um, now I look at it as an organization, you know, I, I look at it as a, a, a committee of human beings who want to make something happen for mm. people servicing, yes. servicing. culture. Yeah. So that's now I want to be part of that 100%. And, and those type of things. So like if you have a radio show and I see a services people on the station, I want to be a part of that. If it's working, if you have, yeah, mm. I just want to be part of things because I know that, if I keep going on the kind of the lower crust of what it is, I'm not going to find people who are as passionate as, as myself. And that's the really tricky thing of navigating in this business. 100%. It's good to have a push and a pull, but it's important to have a reason why, isn't it? Why am I doing this? And the, the act of the giving, I don't know, it, you're, you, you, you are a shop front and you are serving. I, that, I mean, that sounds quite, strategic it's not it's it's i think when we're in a hip-hop culture it's you 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 have to be a part of it you have to be you're contributing aren't you, you all know, the time you know what you have to be you have to be less generic yeah um, and take a risk the yeah. reason why all of this shit evolves is because people are willing to take a risk and they're not being generic. You're yes. going to have some people who are just following along the lines and being who they are and being successful at it. And that's okay. Um, but um, pushing culture forward mm -hmm. is, is a cool thing. It's a great thing. Cool so, as fuck. That's how I feel. It makes me really happy. You say that 
I'm sitting here. Like, if you're listening, ladies and gentlemen, big up yourselves. But if you're watching, and you can always go and watch on a television channel, we are currently talking, uh, and behind him is Destroy's major set. Really, the set, set that it is through individuality and uniqueness, he is it is becoming iconic. This, this band. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, okay, I'm going to try and help do the na- narration as you're pulling things up. But can you just get, first of all, I want to know what we're seeing here within the square is clearly, it's either a, 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 a one stop shop of everything that you could ever in total, or there is a lot more stuff going behind the camera. There are a lot of cupboards and stuff and whatnot. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about the space. So I uh, had, a, had a TV show out here and uh, I interviewed Ice T. Uh, mm. the, the rapper actor. And when I went to his house, he had some amazing stuff in his, on his, that he was a part of film wise. He had predators arm. He had like some things that I was like, Whoa, this Whoa. is crazy. Yeah. So I told the producer of the TV show, I'm like, yo, can we just focus on his, on those collectible things that he has? Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, you know, we'll just do what you always do. And, you know, cause I, cause I do some other cool stuff with people. Um, However, I always still stood on this idea. And when I would meet people, I would ask them, yo, do you have anything cool? Like Prodigy of Mob Deep. I asked him what he had. And the last conversation we had, he said he bought every leather jacket he's seen in a hip hop music video. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And uh, he was so elated. And I was so like, I hit. I hit something there. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, as we all know, this situation happened where we're all in a house and I'm on Instagram Live, on Crazy Legs Instagram Live. And I asked him, do you have the photo with you uh, dirty dancing with Madonna? And he's like, yeah, it's right here. And then uh, I'm like, do you have the photo with you dancing in, in front of Queen Elizabeth? And he's like, yeah, it's right here. Yo. And, uh, the, the battery died on the phone. Of course, I'm interjecting jokes and all that stuff in between. And I went to sleep, left my phone charging. When I woke up the next day, everybody was like, bro, you got to do that again. That's that so was sick. Funny. So <laughs> I had all this stuff in bins. All this stuff used to be in bins. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to really just do it. I'm going to really freaking do it. Amazing. So what you're looking at behind you is uh, is the setup for show of your gems. You know, a lot of these shelving units, mm. hilarity enough, I found it in, 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 in the streets and in the trash, you know. So sick. OK. And, um, you know, I have a lighting system and everything and a TV with that shows the logo. Um, however, you know, I just pull out a lot of gems that that I have. And, uh, I just wanted to come to convey the hell's going on in that show. Yeah. 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 Dude. Like to watch what's going on in the background and alone is captivating. Yeah. So I got, you know, I got a bunch of different things. So this is a pair of sneakers, a concert. Uh, yeah, you may be it. you may be losing destroy every so often in sound It's because he's, he's rushing over to shelves to pull out things. So what's this? So this right here is a pair of sneakers uh, that I I hosted an event and I had these these uh, legends sign it. And then I the next weekend wore them to host the NBA All Star game. And uh, the gentleman of the of, of the Bucks, um, Giannis, he looked at my sneakers and he said, oh, those are from. 2006 i forgot what it was like he talked about the sneaker specifically like the year of it and i was like are you serious bro like i I walked away from him kind of like disappointed you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i didn't care about this the sneaker i didn't care about when it was made (laughs) i'm wearing it because of who signed it and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he, you know, all credit to him. He's a younger gentleman uh, raised in, in Greece, of course. Um, I was going to interview him, but I didn't want to be that nice to him after that. I was like, yo, fam, <laughs> I just felt like I know we being professional, but you kind of disrespecting my hip hop right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was 
was all in good fun, all tongue in cheek. And his bodyguard was looking at me like, you know, he knew yeah. I was going crazy, but he knew I had a reason because he knew who was on my sneaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I sit by his wife, Gianna's wife, who was his girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, yeah, your man's wild, B. What's going on? He's trying to tell me about my sneakers <laughs> when they were made. I don't care. Who, I care about who signed it. And I say, you better tell them who signed these sneakers. So the security guard told them. So this is Slick Rick, Rakim, <sighs> and Dougie Fresh. And I'm like, bro, wow. we out here represent <gasps> NBA All-Star legends. But this right here, these are hip-hop gods right there, fam. Yo. So uh, blown this, away. This is, um, one of the one of the light items, but of course, I also have, you know, the 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 gem of doom that was mailed to me from some gem gentlemen who made it. Wow, you guys have got to watch this if you're listening, bro. Look, this is crazy. That looks amazing. This you probably appreciate. It. I don't really show this a lot, but this is a Reebok did this. It's a spray can. Oh chain. shit! Well, you know, I do Reebok and we do graffiti over here. What? Yeah, man. Uh, we did a, a um, salute to. Uh, we went over there, the Mister Bongo store, and then during the arsonist, we connected with a bunch of graffiti. Yeah, you artists, did a freestyle like, session there. Piece. We got it, man. I got copies of that. <gasps> so this is um, like the ice box that are in front of bodegas in New York City. Uh, recreated by a gentleman named Danny Cortez. Um, wow. He, what was that made of? Plastic? Nah, he made it out of like wood and he put, he put, yo, it looks like a real New York City freaking bodega ice thing. It looks treated. It's like, looks like it's been, you know what I mean? It's, it's been, what's the word? Um, distressed. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, that's crazy. Yeah, so I got a lot of stuff. Uh, this is uh, this is a fun one that was that was made from the P Rock and Seal Smooth album cover. They put oh. the car in there. So the car, so it's like a Matchbox car of the yeah. P Rock and Seal yeah. Smooth. Yeah. That is, I'll be throwing up covers on that. That's so sick. And then a gentleman uh, put this one together with all my records. What is that? It's like a little crate. Yeah. It's like a little toy. And it's got your records in the crate. It's like a... Yeah. So so what he's got there is like a Star Wars-esque style box packaging. And in, in the in the plastic outer cover, inside you see the record box. And it's like a toy record box made of plastic. And it's got your records in the, in the box. Correct. Cold. And wow. then, you know, we go to the classic uh, Transformer toys. This is a Christmas Optimus Prime. Ooh. You know, yeah, and then, you know, we got we got the hip hop stuff. I, I just got a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, this is a this is all, and then fans um hooked up a pair. Oh, six. So these are these are built sneakers. Somebody's custom for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shelters. Detroit. They call me <clears throat> Zokes. Nice. Out in Phoenix, Arizona. Salute, Trill. Big up. That man, that's sick. Yo, that's some heavy wild style on the side of those, those shell toes. So it's blacked out shell toes with the red wild style on it. That's cold. Yo, do you collect Ren and Stimpy? Yeah. I got I love uh, Ren and Stimpy, man. It's so funny. I'm editing. I got a Ren and Stimpy drop from my radio show. I just oh, did it. Oh, stop it. I, did it. I just Yo. did a Venus one. You know, I'd 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 be a happy man in my career if I had <laughs> Stimpy give me all up. Oh. <laughs> That's too much. Yeah, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of cool shit, man. It just it it keeps going over here, man. I love it. Yeah, I I, I don't I, I would guess you're into all sorts of music, but um, Lemmy from Motorhead had a had a house that was crazy. He had like the biggest like German knife collection, and then like. Mad like memorabilia from the first Second World War in Vietnam. Yeah, it, that's nuts. Yeah, they they have um um they have a special Funko set for Motorhead. A couple of pieces, especially from Super Seven, this company. Mm. Um, you know, 
So it's 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 really good. I'm really happy people are out there. So what I realized too is this is another way we could support the artists that we love and That's also right. uh they live they live beyond their their music. So this is one that we made. Uh this is Big L. Oh, so these are okay. What are those toys? What are those um Toys so called. These, these are Funkos. Funkos is the Funko. name of the brand, but That's this is it. this is a custom made one. So this is an actual Funko. This is an actual Funko of That's Selena, right. the singer. Yep, yep. And yep. then this is the one that we had made. That's amazing. So I only made fifty of these, and yeah. bigger Funko. Look, those things, like you say, they're a commodity in themselves. There's like. So like let me crazy. ask you a question, right? Talk to me. Have you ever seen this? What's that? Uh, what is this? Is that laminate? It's oh, cards. it's a stick, sticker cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? What's that? Rebel BC1 Renegade Rockers. <gasps> <clears throat> no, I have not seen that. What the de- What the doggins? Man. I don't dare open it. No, don't open that. Yo, that was just that. Wow. Wow, dude. So did you get given this? Did people just send it through so I can see it on the on the screen? What the thing again? Well, just things like the like the Funko thing and and the, what were the the MF Doom toy, etc. Are these things that have been created for you to display? These are what? things I also find. Crazy Legs gave me this right here. This is a uh, I don't know. It's a B boy. Like what? top rocking. Yeah, that's kind of like a plastic thing. What's the, what's the outside? It's co- it, it looks like one of those. This comes in a bag. Muscle men things. It comes in a bag. I think Kid Robot, the company, made it. It comes in a bag with like three of them. And then if you get the whole thing, it's a big radio, cardboard radio. It's pretty interesting. Oh, that's this cool. Is, so it's a collector's thing, right? This is another item that a fan <laughs> made. So that's like a theater box, right? Destroy theater box. Yeah, it's a little figure in there, bro. Yeah, I, I can see this figure from there. Oh, click, click. Oh shit, that's so sick. <laughs> man. And they put the background of the show in the background. These guys, man, that's so so cool. I would love it. Hey, D, do you remember those? Do you remember those muscle men? Those pink muscle yeah, men? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those I used to collect the hell out of them. With no with no uh, paint on it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> that that was crazy. It's moments like that in in uh, collectible toy art where you've got to think to yourself first question why <laughs> second question is like did they forecast that these things would be expensive later down the line just for pure creative who gives a fuck so um we were on tour in 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 your side of the earth in 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 the uk and burger king did this um simpsons giveaway situation mm. and uh I, w- I went to every burger king and bought every <laughs> figure like three of them three sets of 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 the simpsons and, and i have all of them but this is just this is bartman oh i remember this yeah i remember yeah. this yeah and uh you know you get a kid's meal you get one of these i would go we would stop everywhere yeah in, 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 in the UK that there was and I'd be like I just want the toy no you gotta buy the whole thing <laughs> so give me everything and give me all the toys <laughs> yeah but this is what this is where the rareables come into play so you know you in UK people in the States where the hell did you get that from it's that kind of um, currency isn't it <laughs> yeah absolutely you know I didn't know I was just doing it because I I loved it you know what mm, I mean mm. Um, we actually, now I come to think about it, we did do a freestyle, didn't we? Well, you guys did. Me and Mr. Thing for the mixtape round of Vadim's. Do you remember? Yeah, of course. I was just listening to it. I just transferred it. Yeah, that was that was wicked. Oh, oh, no way. Say what you see. I can't see it from here. What's it say? Crazy, like, stop it. See that logo? What's yeah. that logo? Yeah, Rocksteady. Yeah, I see it. Oh. <gasps> That, that that looks like something that must have come out of like Japan or something. So this is a Canadian company, two gentlemen who uh, did this for Rocksteady anniversary. I think it was uh, 
the one in um in 14th Street in Manhattan. I think it was 25. I mm-hmm. think it was 25. Yeah, yeah. And they only put out like a couple. I don't even remember seeing it that day. But wow. I remember when I looked into this that it was announced that day. And the only person I ever seen with it was Q Unique. And then when I started doing Show Off Your Gems, a couple lightly people would come on the show with it. So I did some investigating and it was two gentlemen who connected uh, and they did a bunch of different B-boys. And one of them is Crazy Legs. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I'm reading to try to see if there's anybody uh, who was real. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, these are all like fictional characters other than uh, Crazy Crazy Legs. Legs. Wow. This is, I mean, does it ever get too much for you, D? Do you ever sit there sometimes and think to yourself, what what have I done? (laughs) What have I done? I've created a monster. Do you ever think that? So the thing is, is that what I love is that people will do things and then they'll tell me about it or, or, you know, uh, open my eyes to something. And you got to, man, you got to appreciate it. Like, yeah, hundred. you know, like, let's say when you was a little kid, of course, we got whatever we got as little kids. Yeah. Right. But what if when you had a baby or whatever, you could buy them a run DMC little people's toy? I can't believe I'm even looking at this. So if you again, listen to this. He's just holding up a casual, like, three-set, three-piece set, Run DMC, boxed, of them on stage, what, you know, toys. And, yo, the boxing alone looks cold. Uh, it's just... It, it, I, I would imagine as Run DMC, they would never thought it would have gone this far. Like, that is something I else. just had a conversation with Run, and, um, sorry... Uh, with DMC and uh, he's doing a kid's book. Yeah. Big up on the I book, asked man. him, I asked him, would you imagine you'd be doing any of this? And um, if anybody knows his specific story, he's a gentleman who had serious bouts with alcoholism. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he's even here to celebrate it is a wonderful thing. So 100%. to your question, as far as does it become overwhelming or anything like that? If I could be honest, this part is the fun part. The tough part is fast forwarding into 2020 now where I am able to do a series about it. And Mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of um, um, people love the show and that's beautiful and that's great. It's just a lot of work to do behind the scenes. So Mm -hmm. as you're interviewing me here now, um, I generated so much uh, content had over 300 episodes with mm-hmm. hip hop legends, gods who show things like the movie script for Crush Groove, mm. Beach Street. Um, you know, so many amazing things that I'm like, oh my gosh, hold on, I gotta like, I gotta edit this and yeah, and and sit with it and understand that I'm actually dealing with a monster here because, um, yeah. I've actually had companies contacted me and wanting to make it a real, a real thing. So that's crazy. You know, that's testament, isn't it? When you do something so, I mean, it's, it sounds so industrious and you, you're clearly like you far beyond driven. Uh, you make it look easy, at, but, but that's part of the trick, isn't it? Cause I, I, I find it like the back end is like a nightmare, but as long as you're in the face and you're just getting on with it, it, you that's your show face that's what we're doing and that's the passion isn't it and i can yeah, imagine absolutely. yeah i can imagine that's pretty hard for you you know in, in a real it's a relationship that you have uh what say say that again articulate that one again well the work itself isn't work it's fun but there is an endurance to it and that's that's it's like a, a relationship, isn't it? It's, it's a relationship in itself. Oh, yeah. So, yes, of course. So yeah. so to let people understand, of course, you know, what you put out there is the front. You know, this is mm. a business. Um, I am a person who needs to convey, um, you know, good things so that our culture is put in a wonderful 100%. way. It's important to me. I could come on here and, and you know, be 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 crazy and foul language and all that stuff. And, and all. Uh, but me, I'm. 
I, I wanted to to gravitate to people. I want to understand. I want parents who are hip hop heads to have kids who are hip hop heads to enjoy stuff that are hip hop and mm -hmm. not complain that the younger generation is doing this or the old heads are doing that. I want to try to find a happy medium because we could enjoy things like, um, you know, football, like you guys, uh, you know, what we call soccer, mm. that's generational. You know what I mean? It'll that's always right. be pure. It's always the beautiful game, no matter what generation touches it. And it's true. It's about, you know, passing that down to another person or just letting them allow to, to appreciate it in their way and not kind of mm. be, be purist or anything like kind of just be like, okay, cool, cool. Let's all have a conversation. Let's all embrace everybody. And I think that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm doing. That's, that's the coolest fucking, that's the coolest thing, bro. I love that. I love that mentality. Cause it's, I think rock and roll and heavy metal, those kind of genres suffer at the fate of old heads, like not letting young bands through and young and bands as a whole, anything over three pieces, they're going to have a hard time even sustaining without a backline or some sort of label support or stuff. They're not helping the situation when hip hop is still revered, even by, you know, the mumble rap community, you know, they still gravitate to Wu Tang, you know, it's still really important some important foundations and you know we don't need that old head mentality do we uh because when you do that you automatically alienate a community yeah 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 it's so important i knew this podcast was going to be awesome and it it delivered my brother and you've always been a, a straight up guy. You've always been, you've always been one of those guys that it, you do what it says on the tin and you represent. I really appreciate you jumping on my man. For sure, brother. I appreciate you as well. Continue, you know, doing your thing. Here, I'll show you something else. <laughs> this is just a little 45. Oh shit. That, oh, it's good. What for those guys who are watching Beast Beastie Breakdance seven five what seven inch? Yeah, Sugar Hill. This is the original pretty pretty, <gasps> pretty classic. Whoa man that yo have you got your have you got this this whole area insured? You've got this whole area. This is a shrine, dude. You got it if you got it insured. <laughs> You know this thing's going to be in museums one day. You know that, right? It's going to be in Madden yeah. Two Swords or something. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. passing, passing it along, sharing these stories, telling these fun things. That's it, bro. That's like, mm -hmm. like if I look at your side, you know, of course you have you have those pieces. I love that Skeletor Madness with the, yeah. with the Care Bears there. That's it. Yeah, with the Care Bears, we got best yeah, piece I, here. I, I wanna... really, I, I, I love mm -hmm. the messaging. It's so sick, right? And then you have the classic rock steady jersey. Oh, tight. Um, <clears throat> that I'm even happy that you even have framed. That's super dope. Yeah, man. Uh, you know what? I get a buzz out of the when a drill rapper or a grime MC sitting there, and they may not know the lineage, the 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 the, the DNA that they're behind, right. but it's all one and the same. I, I get I get a personal sense of satisfaction out of that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, man. Um, you, know I mean? you know, thank you so much for, for having me on. Um, My pleasure, brother. You know, if anybody wants to tune in, and, you know, show off your gems. Show off your uh, gems, baby. Dot TV, showoffshowdown.com, I Destroy on Instagram. Come uh, on. And if you guys are collectors, anybody's a collector, hit me up. YouTube.com forward slash I Destroy, B. That's the one, my guy. And trust me, there's enough people. My my team will be on this. Then they're on it, man. Your your fans is our fans over here, my guy. That's beautiful, man. Hip hop's a beautiful thing. I'm happy that we could we could connect and talk about culture, talk about um, you know, just inspiring things. And I know yeah. this is. Uh, I'm happy to see you behind the mic. You know, 
kind of getting getting some 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 stuff off too you know what i mean yeah it's man cool. it's what it's all about man it's constant evolution keep you know it's what it's what the human mind needs isn't it yeah of course man keep exercising Big up, ladies and gentlemen. Big shout out to Destroy Inside the Place Killer Keller podcast once again. Ren and striking. Stimpy, Ren and Stimpy inside that. <laughs> exactly. And don't you, Burton Ernie fans, start getting jealous. He's Ren and Stimpy all day. <laughs> the Killer Keller podcast. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Thank you very much, Destroy. Destroy.